Okay, today we're going to take an object on a background, we're going to cut it out and we're going to put it on a new background. So here in the top left hand corner we have our object with its shadow on this plain background. Bottom left we have the background we're going to put it on. Top right we have the cutout of the object with no shadow and it just looks like it's sitting there floating in air, there's nothing three-dimensional, there's nothing realistic about it. But as soon as we copy the shadow over, suddenly it looks like it's all part of the same image. Okay, so let's get started. So let's just arrange those all so we can see them. Okay, so let's get our background. So this is our background image, and we're going to lay our before on top of it. So we've got the layer, duplicate layer, and then in the document, the default always is the document you're in. But if we just go to the background layer, we can now force it to go to a different place. So if we go over here, now when we look at our layers, we have our background with the full object sitting on top of our other background. So we just turn the visibility on and off. We can see the underneath. And remember, the top layer is always what you can see. So in this instance, it takes up the whole image. Just make it a bit bigger so people can see it easier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut out the object. Okay. So up here, using um, any of the uh, object selection tools, either object selection, quick selection, or magic wand, you'll see that we get this option called select subject. So if I click on select subject, it does a pretty good job of finding what it is we're after. But can you see it's not taking any of the shadow at all. So we'll now go into Select and Mask and we'll just have a look and see can we tidy up any of these small areas. So let's just zoom in there. Holding the space bar, your cursor becomes a hand. You can just drag your um, image around. That's always worth remembering. It's exactly the same in um, Lightroom. So if we go in here and start painting, and we want to go negative. So anywhere that's pink will be masked out. So I'm not, I'm not going to do this fully. I'm just doing a really quick one to show you. And obviously those of you that have used layer masks in the past know you can come back at a later stage and refine any of these things. Okay, so I'm just doing a really quick, there's nothing good about any of this. I'm just showing you that you can enhance your selection in here using the brush tool. So once once you've made your selection better than the selection I've made, we go down to output down here, okay? And we go to new layer with layer mask. So that's going to create us a third layer. We click OK. And let's zoom back out. So if we look, so there's our three layers. We can't see the bottom one because there are two layers on top of it. If we turn this off we can't see this layer at all but now we can see the top layer and because we've got a mask on this, a layer mask, white says show me what's on this layer, black says hide what's on this layer. So if we hide the background behind this we can now see the object sitting on top. Okay. But as we said, that's not very, very realistic, okay? So what we do is we now duplicate this layer and that's Command J or Control J on a PC, okay? So once we've done that, we wanna keep this new one that we've made on the top of our stack because that becomes very important at the very end, okay? But for now, we can turn off the visibility of it and we want to click on the layer below it. OK, so we've now selected the layer that we duplicated. The duplicated version is above, but we're not able to see it because what we want to do now is we want to add the shadow part of this. OK, so we make sure we've clicked on the layer mask. When you see this frame around elements in the, the layers panel, that's where you're going to be doing anything. So in this instance, we want to increase the size of the mask. OK. So we go over here and we grab the lasso tool. Let's just get rid of that for a second. We need to 
hide that for a second. So if you hold on the shift key and hide the actual mask, we can now see our shadow underneath. We, we, we know that our background's underneath. So we can now see where our shadow is because previously we couldn't see where the shadow is. So let's just make, look, a really big, rough selection around the shadow area, okay? So if we now just shift click on that again to make the, the mask visible, and now if we do command or control and backspace, can you see that it's added our selection? Okay, so now we have the object and the shadow and a load more detail that we don't need, okay? So we need to get rid of the lighter part of this, okay? So we need to create a curves adjustment. Let's create a curves adjustment layer. So what we want to do is, if we now start playing around with this, can you see it affects everything, all the layers, yeah? That's useless to us. So in this instance, there's this little symbol down here, which is the clipping path. If we click that, observe how this has now changed. This is basically saying this is only going to affect the layer below it. Okay, so now if we drag this brightness in, watch what happens to. Can you see we're really, really separating out the values? So this is now virtually pure white. And we are getting a little bit of a color tint, but we can sort that out in a minute. For now, we just want to basically make this disappear because we have blending modes where we can go in and change different values. So if I go to multiply, oh, sorry. Let's move this one. multiply, can you see how it's now blended in with the, uh, the background? But it's no use to us because we've lost our image. So if I go back up here and turn our image back on, we now have our shadow and our finished image. If I turn that back to normal, this is what we have. So basically multiply basically takes any value that's not white and multiplies it with the values below it. So white does nothing to the values below it. So if we change it, multiply, can you see? Different ones will do different things, but in this instance, multiply is what we want. And then you look at it, you can see, we know there's a bit of a tint there. You, you might be happy with that at this point. If you are, happy days, move along, flatten it, save it, your composition is done. Sorry, your composite is done. I keep mixing those two. But what we want to do now is we want to make this color cast go away. So my way of doing that, and like all things in Photoshop, there are lots of ways of doing different things, is to basically convert the shadow into black and white. So if we now add a black and white layer to that, okay, what has it done? It's turned everything black and white because it does everything below it. But what did we just learn? If we do the clipping path, it just does it to the one below. And now if we just color cast, no color cast. And that's your picture finished. If you were then, as I say, you could then zoom in and just make sure you were very happy with the cutouts. So here we have a section that's wrong. Get the paintbrush and we want to paint in black. There we go. So we're just showing little bits from underneath. And I've I've enlarged this. This this is quite a small file. I've enlarged that. Hence, we've got uh, a lot of um, pixelation going on. But I just wanted to be able to do this work at quite uh, fast speed without the machine slowing us down. So, but yeah, so that's you'll have all tried doing layer masks before. Okay, so hopefully that's been of interest.